What's going on guys, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and it's time for your DM's Guild Spotlight. Sorry this is a little bit late. I was away for the weekend, I'm still kind of getting over that cold that I had earlier in the week. But I've got something a little bit different for you this week. Um, if you watch our Tuesday night uh, campaign, Know Your Role, you'll be somewhat familiar with this. Uh, it's something that harkens back to older editions, at least that I recall, and and people come up with their own versions of these and things like that, but I, I just thought I'd share it with you in case you've never heard of it. If you're new to D&D, if 5e is your new, uh, your first foray into it, um, you might find it interesting. So, what am I talking about? I'm talking about 5e critical hit and critical fumble charts. So, uh, for those of you, again, who are unfamiliar, but most of you are, I'm sure if you're watching this, a natural 20 on a roll of an attack roll is a critical hit and a roll of a natural one is usually considered an automatic failure but it's also referred to as a critical fumble and what this is is this is a percentile table that basically when your PCs roll a natural 20 or a natural one they roll on this percentile table and it gives them the opportunity to uh, to do either something really grand if it is a if it's a natural 20 or something potentially really bad can happen if it's a natural one and it just kind of adds a little bit more it's also a free pdf so we're going to go through the whole thing i'll have the link for it in the description um but yeah it can add a little bit more tension and grandiose effects uh if you know if they roll well so it's a four page pdf You'll see you got your critical hit table. So basically, here's your percentile rolls. And then here's your fumble. Here's it all on one page. And that's it. And there's a little bit of caveats at the end that we'll talk about some optional rules. So I'm not going to sit here and run through every single one. But basically, on the critical hit, the higher the number you get, the better it is. So if you were to say roll a, a one to a five on the percentile roll after you score a natural 20 all allies if it was a ludicrous maneuver all allies with passive perception 12 get plus two on the next roll and then we'll jump ahead a little bit but mind you that means that it is just a regular hit it is not a it doesn't do double damage like a regular natural 20 normally would um but some of that can get augmented we'll talk about that in a little bit uh Again, I will warn you, this has the potential to make your players extremely powerful. So you may want to kind of think this through before you try to go and implement this into your game. It is, gives them the, I mean, it gives them the potential to get screwed pretty hard too, but it gives them the potential to be way OP if they roll really well. Um, you can check out this past week's Know Your Roll to see a pretty good example of that happening. Um... You know, turn the tide of what you thought was going to be a difficult battle into almost nothing relatively quickly. You also may consider adding it so that your enemies also get this, but I feel like if you do, then the players are going to be like, no, you know what, let's just not use it. So it's really up to you to figure that out. So we'll jump ahead a little bit. Ruthless Assault here, 30 to 35. That's an extra damage die. So when that says extra damage die, that means sort of like a brutal critical for a uh, for a barbarian let's say so if you were rolling the best example is if you are using a two-handed weapon like a maul or a greatsword so you swing and you get a natural 20 and you roll somewhere between a 30 and a 35 then you would instead of rolling 4d6 you would roll 3d6 you'd roll your regular damage and one extra damage die meaning uh, 3d6. If you're rolling with a singular one-handed weapon like a longsword or a, a battle axe, it doesn't really matter. That's not getting doubled. So, um, but it would take into effect things like certain spell attacks that have multiple dice, like a uh, firebolt would only, if it was 2d10, it would only do 3d10 rather than 4. I think it would actually work the same way with a smite as well, if you were <coughs> divine smiting or a sneak attack. So, numbers 1 through 29 do special effects. They do not add extra. They don't double the dice. Numbers 30 
through 69 do one extra damage die. And there are some other effects in here. Bleeding damage per round, blinded, stunned, bonus AC. Roll twice and take the better number. Then once you start getting to number 70, that's when you start getting your typical critical hits where you have the double damage. So 70 to 90 is your average critical hit with an extra feature. Like if you were to roll an 85, the creature is prone and stunned, <clears throat> stunned for one round, constitution save, or have its movement halved, and then it also does double damage. Once you get up to 90, you're now in the triple range. So, uh, 90 to 99 is triple damage on a crit. Um, 97 to 98, prone, stunned for two rounds, triple damage. And if you manage to roll a 100, or higher depending on the optional rules DC 18 constitution save or the creature just flat out dies prone 1d4 squares away stunned for three rounds and quadruple damage uh, similarly for the critical fumble you want to get high because if you get an 81 to 100 nothing bad happens to you uh, so if you roll a one, you're knocked prone, you're disarmed with your weapon 1d3 squares away, you are stunned for two rounds, and you have critical hit yourself. Blinded, half damage to yourself, no bonus action or reaction next round, and then eventually nothing unusual happens. There are optional rules. Confirmation of a crit slash fumble, roll a second d20. After a successful critical hit, a second successful attack roll, which is the AC, confirms a critical hit. After a fumble, roll a second attack roll. Um, if they miss still, then it confirms the fumble. There's also the martial advantage where martial characters, fighters, barbarians, paladins, rangers, and monks add their class level to their critical hit. Which is a way to try to give the martial classes a little bit of a bump up. Um, this also gives them the potential to get past 100 if they roll really well. Um, which again, can things to think about. I'm thinking I may switch to the confirmation rules. I know it's a little bit late to do it mid-campaign. But I think that makes it a little bit, just a little bit harder to do. It makes it a little bit easier. So, um, well yeah guys, that's it really quick. Um, you can just print these out and then keep, you know, print it on one page or two pages. It's just a cool way to add a little bit something extra to your game. I remember much larger tables in 3rd edition, back of one of many books, I don't remember which one. But I remember on a natural one there was a potential where you could still find, you could find treasure as like one of the low rolls. Like, oh you, you trip and fall and find treasure, yay! Um, anyway guys, let me know what you think. It's free. So you can go ahead and download it and you can use it or not. Do you think this is too powerful? Do you think the the benefits outweigh the penalties? Let me know what you guys think because I've been using it. And it's frustrating, but it's also fun at the same time. The players get super more excited for critical hits than they normally would. Um, but they're also terrified if I ever decide to add it in to the, P the NPCs and the enemies. Because then they've got that on working against them. Plus, I mean, if I were to roll over 100, I could potentially kill my PCs in one move, which is not cool. Um, anyway, guys, let me know what you think. I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll see you next time.